All right, guys, welcome back to Just Driven. Today's video is going to be an update on the Toretto Charger. Stay tuned, a lot to fill you guys in on. Okay guys, welcome to the channel. And literally just to my left is the engine. Adrian's about to fit in the car for its final time. And I'm kind of excited to see what that's gonna look like. James is gonna step in here in a second, go into detail with you guys about all the stuff that's been going on with coordinating with Joe over at Hawaii Racing on finalizing every last little minute detail before this engine goes into the car. Alex is gonna chime in here, kind of go over in detail with you on the final drive line assembly, as well as wheel fitment. You know, I'm not so sure these things are gonna fit. We got some monster donuts that need to be put in the back. We'll see. If you haven't liked, commented, or subscribed, please take this moment to do that. We would really appreciate it. If you haven't seen any of our other videos, check out our Super Build video, the partner to this monster. And don't forget, we are building an Eclipse and we're gonna hopefully pull off one of the best and the most accurate screen used eclipse uh, eclipses that's floating around out there. If you guys aren't a subscriber, now's a good time to hit the subscribe button because you will actually have an opportunity to win that car. I can't wait for you guys to see it when it's done. So stay tuned on that. Sorry to report in this video, you're not gonna see any tire shredding or burnouts. Well, except for this one. <laughs> All right, Alex 2.0 here. It's a new day, and we're gonna go ahead and get these wheels test fitted. The front is a 15 by eight zero offset, which is about a four inch backspace, and the rears are a 15 by 10 zero offset as well with a five and a half inch backspace. And these are the American Racing VN420. It is the closest look to the old school Daisy 200 S's. The front tire is a 225-7015, and on the rear we're running a 295-6515, which we're not 100% sure if it's gonna fit, but this is where we're gonna find out, so check it out. <laughs> Just barely. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, there's. What is this camera? Let's go. Oh, God. Nice, nice. Good impression. Forehead impression. <laughs> Look at his lines in his head. <laughs> is it on my actual head? Yeah. Uh, oh, well. Wow, that actually kind of fits. <laughs> Look, <laughs> that's funny. All right, so they fit. 
I don't know how, but they fit. A little oh, tight. A little tight. Hey. Can't fit nothing through there. It's not bad. They look like ass just sitting on dollies, but. What do you mean the back? The, this, the diff is crooked. It's like this right now. This tire is way closer to here than that side. Here we have 316s. Over there you have like 5.8s from tire to here. Uh, so it's like the axle's... I mean the axle has a dull thing. Yeah. Well, that's, what I, that's what I just well, that's asked. What asking. These are stock old leaf springs, right? I'm not sure. The originals. So we don't know if the bushings are good, we don't know any of Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I think these are the stock leaf springs. I know they did change the bushings on the back the and not on the front. <clears throat> yeah. Optimism wins today. Well, I'm impressed. I, I really didn't expect him to look like that. All right, so that's going to do it for this wheel fitment on the 70 Charger. And they fit. Miraculously, they fit. The only thing we need to figure out is what final leaf springs we're going to do. Go ahead and replace all the bushings for the leaf springs and the new setup. Um, figure out, we obviously need to do like a drag setup so it doesn't squat too much. It just grabs traction and goes. And we are also going to add a set of traction bars underneath so that way we don't get any axle hop or any crazy vibrations in the back. So we'll catch up with you guys in a bit when we go ahead and do that. Wrap your head around this. 572 cubic inches equals 9.3 liters. 9.3 liters. It would take three, three liter motors, three, two JCs to equal the displacement of this 572 Hemi. It is a Goliath of a motor. Look how big this thing is. It's kind of ridiculous to even look at it. It's nothing that I'm familiar working with and I've learned a lot during this whole build process. And speaking of the build, we called on the experience of Joe at Hawaii Racing up in Simi Valley. He played a big role in supplying engines, I think in the first two or three movies for the franchise. So this is a daunting task. I don't even know where to begin here. There's just so much going on. Let's just start at the bottom and work our way up. Right here, this nice gold shiny thing down there, that is the Milliden oil pan. It is a road race pan, so it's actually got a lower profile, gives you more ground clearance with increased volume. You can see the base in there uh, widens out past the bottom of the engine. Normally it would just be deeper, closer to the ground. This one goes wide. The engine itself, the internals, well, let's start with the block. It's a Bill Mitchell Products uh, 572. It's a aluminum block. It's got ductile iron sleeves. It's got gigantic bores. We are running a 4340 chromoly stroker crank, all race spec bearings in there. We are also running 4340 forged rods. We are running eight and a half to one compression pistons. Forged alloy, obviously, they're probably about this big, so kind of like a dessert plate size. It's pretty substantial. Holding all that compression are the Edelbrock CNC heads. These are factory off the shelf from Edelbrock. They come preloaded with valves and springs and retainers. Uh, they are 2.32 inch on the intake, 1.94 inch on the exhaust. We went ahead and upgraded the uh, springs and the retainers, and that is so it can work harmoniously with the custom ground to Joe specs. Joe at Hawaii Racing, he's been building blower motors for years, so he knows exactly what kind of camshaft required to make what kind of power. Now, up front here, we got the uh, MSD Ignition. It's the Pro Billet Distributor. We're going to be running that along with the uh, MSD Ignition box. That will take care of all of our ignition duties. In front of that, we got this really pretty chrome alternator. This is a GM based high amp output. Remember, this car is going to require a lot of electrical demands, right? Because we got electric steering, we got electric air conditioning, we got brushless in tank pump that's pushing huge volume fuel forward. Forcing air into the motor is that massive wind 871 blower. Look at the size of this thing. It is preposterous. And just when you thought things couldn't get any more ridiculous, look at that buzzard catcher, man. One, two, three, five inch throttle blades. Whoa! 
the volume inside of that thing is equivalent to a one bedroom Los Angeles apartment, I kid you not. Now, in order to attach that to the blower, we had to go ahead and use something called an accelerator. It's a product that BDS makes to attach a big and ugly to a 671 or an 871 framed blower. Alex is taking care of all the electronics for the car. So I'm gonna toss it over to him. He's also done all the work on selecting the drivetrain components. So, Alex! All right, so let's talk about the transmission that's going into this charger. This is a rebuilt and strengthened 727 with a gear vendor overdrive added onto the tail shaft. This adds three additional gears to each individual gear of the 727. Now this 727 does have a manual valve body, so it is going to be manually shifted on the B&M shifter. Not 100% sure how we're gonna actuate each individual overdrive yet, or if we're just gonna leave it for final overdrive for when it's on the freeway. And that is paired with this 2400 to 2600 RPM stall converter. This was all supplied by Joe at Hawaii and whoever he had the transmission rebuilt by. So this combination that's going in the charger, it is more than sufficient to handle everything we're gonna throw at it, whether torque rise or ugh. torque wise or power wise, this is gonna handle everything we are able to throw at it. It's also gonna be good enough to drive on the freeway at not some obnoxious RPM where the harmonics are just all over the place. This will still be a good, comfortable driving transmission for the street. So the brains behind the operation of the motor and the transmission is going to be this Holly HP EFI system. Now, I went to Danny to try to figure out what would be the best system to put on this car because I wanted something that was easy and that he was familiar with in tuning already. So we went back to thinking of the idea of going to an AEM system or Link, but we ended up deciding on Holly just to keep it all domestic and the family together. We chose this Holly HP AFI. Now the reason I chose this one over the Terminator is that this has the option for dual wideband setup and a lot more protections and parameters of adjustment over the Terminator system. This was quite a bit more expensive, but like I said, we needed the adjustments and the availability, uh, the availability of those pins to be able to get all the adjustments and nitrous tuning and all that stuff if we decide to go that route. So this is gonna be able to control everything. Now, the kit did come with the HP EFI ECU, an unterminated engine harness, which is already pinned to the ECU itself. Now we chose this setup because they have one off the shelf that is just essentially a plug and play eight cylinder harness, but being as we have that BDS-8 injector system at the top of the hat, those injectors are very close together and we didn't know where we were gonna mount the coil, we didn't know where we were gonna mount the ignition box. With that being said, we wanted to tuck the harness up nice and tight against the motor so that way there's not like excess loops hanging around the engine. So it comes with that unterminated harness for us to figure out and set up. It has an injector harness that's already pinned and set up for the injector type that we have. We just needed to cut it to length and then butt it into the new main harness. After speaking with Holly on the phone, actually quite a few times trying to figure out options, that's why we decided against the Terminator. I had to reach out to them to figure out the ignition system because it does need to be amplified for the new cam and crank signal adapted distributor. So they recommended that I go with the Sniper EFI ignition box with the Sniper EFI coil. So this pairs together with their entire system, being that it is all Holly based. So we'll have no issue getting this stuff wired into the HP EFI ECU. Because I looked at the wiring diagram and those pins are already set up for the distributor and the ignition box. As we mentioned in the original video when we went over to visit Joe at Hawaii Racing, we wanted to only run this car on E85. Now that's also due to the cooling aspect of E85, but the power aspect. This is gonna give Danny the ability to tune to the max that the motor can take because we know that the octane isn't gonna be an issue being that it has good fuel. So it will always be on E85. It will have a tune for pump gas if for whatever reason you run out of fuel and you need to go to a gas station, you can still pump 91 in it but it is going to be mainly tuned for E85 and for all the power. So the rear end in this car is a fully ordered and crate packaged from Curry. It is a nine inch rear end with a True Track LSD. It has 31 spline axles and the Willwood Dynapro 11 inch brake system already installed on the car. So we did it on our other B body where we pieced together each item and it was 
almost the same amount of money, if not more work to do it piece by piece, because then we had to clean the rear end up. We had to take it to get powder coated, install the new LSD, the axles, the seals, the brake kit, the handbrake shoe mechanism, everything had to be installed in house. This Curry system comes off the shelf, ready to go. You get your choice of gear ratio. And for this car, we actually chose a 3.5 final drive. The gear ratio was selected based on that tire diameter. Now, if we go slightly smaller, it's not gonna be too bad because we do have that gear vendor overdrive setup so it shouldn't be too much of an issue but we'll deal with that later all right so we're going to throw it back on over to daryl so he could talk about this laser straight body that he put the wrong emblems on <laughs> i kind of screwed up and of course alex likes rubbing it in my face we have so many chargers here at the shop and of course i confused this charger with the 68 charger and we actually left the holes for the charger emblem on the toretto charger which weren't supposed to be there. We had to redo the entire roof to fill those holes. Of course, the roof and the quarter panels got redone. I saw a few little dings on that cowling that I couldn't live with. So while they were doing that, Joe was able to address the cowling and we sorted those little dings out. Of course, it still needs to be color sanded and buffed. The interior is just amazing. I've got to get myself in there and I've got to start using my expertise in CAD. Of course, the cardboard aided design version of CAD. And I've got to develop what I think the interior would likely would have looked like, or at least the driver's side instrument cluster would have looked like in the movie. That's what I'm going to be focused on here next in the coming days. So guys, if you haven't seen our previous videos on this build, be sure to check them out because we went into great detail with what Richard's done on the interior, all the aluminum work that went into the door panels, the seats. You're going to miss out on some really good information. So be sure to check out our previous videos on this build. Down. Drop the motor down? Yeah, see what happens? Not all the way, but just be open. Yeah. Tell me when. Okay, okay, okay. Un poquito más. Little more. Little more. Okay, un poquito más. Okay, right there. Come on. I don't know if you guys follow our channel and if you're new to our channel, take a look back at some of our previous videos. You're gonna see that we respond to almost every comment or we at least try to. Unlike a lot of YouTubers out there, we focus a lot of effort in interacting with our subscribers. So please comment, hit the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up if you like what you see. Thank you. It actually doesn't look bad. <laughs> Let's talk about this rear end. They fit. Dang. Yeah, so that I can't believe they fit. Yeah, no, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, today is uh, the ninth year of his passing, and it's just mind boggling that it's nine years already. Paul and I went, we, you know, at one point I had the vast majority of his cars in my warehouse. I mean, we're going back to 08, 09 days. I, I never really saw his Supra, but his Skyline, his, I bought a few cars for him. We traded cars. You know, there was a handful of cars that we swapped. Paul was a good dude, man. He, he, uh, he's, he's exactly what you saw on screen is what you saw in real life. No BS, just the nicest guy. I mean, I remember going out to lunch or dinner with him multiple times and, and 
I can't even tell you how many cameras were handed to me. Oh, could you take my picture with, I took so many pictures of Paul and, and whoever handed me their camera and he was always the perfect gentleman, you know? Yeah. So um, it was, it's a huge loss. Yeah. It's a huge loss. And a little bit of the super build, a little bit of this brings, brings those fond memories back.